in order to understand how we have come to the place of deception we are at within the church, we need to know how this actually has been a deliberate agenda from gay activists. Marshall Kirk and Hunter Madsen first authored an article in Christopher Street magazine, a homosexual magazine that no longer exists, in December 1984, where they laid out the strategy for the acceptance of homosexuality. I'm just going to share four of the ten strategies that they laid out. Firstly, one, portray gays as victims. And have they not perfected this over the last almost 40 years? Yeah. They blame all mental health problems on bullying and victimisation. Opponents are accused of causing suicides if you refuse to take a gay affirming approach. There has never been any specific research into the causes of suicides and mental health problems of gay people. Having lost a younger brother to suicide, I personally know the gut-wrenching pain to lose someone in this manner and take suicide very seriously. However, we know that in gay-affirming countries such as Norway, Denmark and Switzerland, suicide rates remain just as high for LGBT people as it does for other countries indicating that stigma is most likely not the main cause for mental health problems. Mm. High mental health rates are likely to be tied into the high rates of child sexual abuse, which we know causes severe mental health problems and suicide, and the deep levels of brokenness that are made clear in clinical and medical statistics. Charlene Cochrane, former lesbian, discusses the deception that the gay lifestyle is a happy one and talks about how it's actually in reality far from it, far from happy. The second strategy, make gays look favourable, the moral pillars of society. So if there's someone who is gay and they accomplish something, to make them into a role model, a mentor, someone to be admired, The third strategy, another one they have perfected, make the victimizers look bad. Anyone who disagrees with the gay agenda is labeled in very negative terms. Recently, we had Margaret Court dragged through the mud simply for expressing what the Bible says about marriage as a Christian leader and opposing confusing gender ideology in schools. She said, the gay lobby is behind that bullying program in the schools. And you know, children are not knowing. They're taking out he and she, and you can become an it and a we and a they. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you feel like being a girl, you can dress like a girl if you're a boy. And if you're a boy, I think what confusion for a child. I get confused just talking about it. When I was little, I was very much a tomboy. My mum used to say to me, you should have been a boy. I could kick the football better than anybody, play cricket, but you know what? I always knew I was a girl and I was conscious and I was brought up like that. And I liked wearing shorts, but I liked wearing dresses. And there was never any of that, any other thought that that was ever said. But with the literature and bullying, the stuff that's put out today into children's minds, I tell you what, if you haven't got parents who bring you up that way and you've got parents who don't care and you're hurt and offended by someone saying something to you, I tell you, a child can start to think, well, maybe I am a girl when they're a boy or maybe I am a boy when they're a girl. Your thoughts and even medically they're knowing now they say the mind is a battlefield. That's why I wrote the book, Train Your Brain. It's all in the Bible. God's got so much in there about a mind, how it affects us, affects our emotions, our feelings. 
You can think, I'm a boy, and it'll affect your emotions and feelings and everything else. That's all the devil. That's what Hitler did, and that's what communism did. Got the minds of the children. And there's a whole plot in our nation and in the nations of the world to get the minds of the children. And when Margaret Court came out with that, she was brutally vilified by the media. Billie Jean King twisted it to, when she talked about children of transgenders being from the devil, that put me over the edge. She never said that. She said the ideology, calling a boy a girl, those kinds of thoughts were of the devil. She never ever called anyone a devil. But sadly, the truth is rarely ever shared on mainstream media. The misrepresentations, however, the victimization runs riot. Israel Folau is just another recent example. During the No campaign last year, I shared a video with James Parker who talked about his recovery journey from homosexuality. This had me accused of dangerous and unscientific practices. They associated this with conversion therapy, something James never underwent. His life, however, was transformed by our Lord, the way only he can transform lives. And I think that's why they're trying so hard to ban what they call conversion therapy, because Jesus can and does transform lives. That's the good news we need to share with people. In spite of the persecution for sharing that, we need to share the good news. God does and can transform lives. And I'd highly recommend watching some of the videos. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of people talking about how God has changed them. And there's a fantastic documentary, Such Were Some of You is the name of the documentary. It's about two hours, has many testimonies within it. I highly recommend it. So why is this so unpopular? Because it breaks the lie, the lie that we were born that way and we can't change. Because many people can and do change. So during the No campaign, I had that and many other false accusations made against me. This and the fact that I cannot support gender fluidity, something that is truly unscientific and very dangerous, had me de-accredited from a mental health profession. We aren't just fighting for freedom of religion. We are also fighting for freedom of science. Mm. Gender fluidity has no scientific basis whatsoever. And it is very dangerous. I'm going to read for you some of the risks for a boy, a male, transitioning to a female. And so these are some of the risks that the trans medical research has on their informed consent form for someone who is choosing to transition. Okay, some of the possible risks and side effects, loss of fertility, unable to get someone pregnant. Increased risk of developing blood clots. Blood clots in your legs or arms, deep vein thrombosis can cause pain and swelling. Blood clots to the lungs can interfere with breathing and getting oxygen into the body. Blood clots in the arteries of the heart can cause heart attacks. Blood clots in the brain can cause a stroke. Blood clots to the lungs, heart or brain can result in death. Possible increased risk of having <coughs> cardiovascular disease. Increased risk of developing diabetes, nausea and vomiting especially when starting estrogen therapy. Changes in blood tests for the liver. Estrogen may possibly contribute to damage of the liver from other causes. May cause or worsen headaches and migraines. May cause elevated levels of prolactin, a hormone made by the pituitary gland. A few persons on estrogen for hormone therapy have developed prolactinomus, a, ben a benign tumour of the pituitary gland 
that can cause headaches and problems with vision and can cause other hormone problems. May worsen depression or cause mood swings. May increase the risk of breast cancer. And one of the things that it says is the long-term effects of estrogen therapy are not clear and we cannot guarantee any results or that there will be no harm. So why are we saying it's safe to transition children when it clearly states that the long-term effects of estrogen therapy are not clear, we cannot guarantee any results and that there will be no harm and there's quite a long list of some of the possible risks that we are aware of. How can any child have informed consent and understanding of what that really fully means. No mm -hmm. child can fully understand that. They can't fully understand the implications of I will never be a father and how that will feel in 20 years time. Mm -hmm. No young person can fully understand and give their informed consent. However, this is encouraged and anyone who opposes the harm to children is vilified. And the fourth thing they had that I'm going to read of their strategies is undermine the moral authority of homophobic churches by portraying them as antiquated backwaters, badly out of step with the times and what the latest findings of psychology are. Use talk to muddy the moral waters by publicising support for gays by the more moderate churches and by raising theological objections of our own about conservative interpretations of biblical teachings. So that's a very deliberate strategy that they put out there. Mm. And we have certainly seen that implemented very strongly. This shows how the gay lobby have deliberately sought not just to change culture, but to indoctrinate churches into their beliefs. And we can see many examples of this played out. Christians who hold to biblical truth are accused of being not true Christians or being unloving when the reverse is true. Every attempt is made to silence the voice of true Christians. This actually has been Satan's ploy for thousands of years. Silence the voice of the prophet, anyone who speaks God's word in truth. When John the Baptist called out Herod for marrying his brother's wife, adultery, Herod had him imprisoned to shut him up. Herodias eventually was able to get his head cut off to silence his voice. Cut off the head of the prophet, silence his voice. Today they use discrimination laws to silence the voice of the prophet. Fears of fines, imprisonment, losing your career, accused of taking the Bible out of context, called old school dinosaurs, right wing conservatives, making you look like you do come from the antiquated backwaters. Bullied into silence with the threat of the full force of the law for those that fail to comply. And this is how the gay lobby has managed to be so successful in their agenda. Mm -hmm. We must understand the agenda, but also we need to know that most homosexuals don't realise they are being used. We must have compassion for people, remembering that so many are in genuine deception. This does not ever mean that we deny the truth, that homosexuality is sin in God's eyes. We never deny the truth. Matthew Vine, known to be a head of the gay Christian movement in charge of the Reformation Project, he made the following statement in a debate. I think it's harmful to gay Christians to ask them to basically avoid any kind of romantic intimacy for their entire life because their sexuality is irredeemably broken. While many agree with Matthew, and I thank him for his honesty, that homosexuality is often caused by broken sexuality, I have to disagree with any part of us being irredeemably broken. Mm. This is to deny the power of God 
as spoken of in Ephesians 3.20. He who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that we can ask or imagine, according to the power that works in us. God's power to heal is absolutely amazing. How big is your God? Mm 